Imagine clocking out of your daily job and receiving not a paycheck but a jug of beer. Sounds crazy, right? But in ancient Egypt, it was a reality. Now let's dive into the frothy depths of history. Beer was not just a pastime in ancient Egyptian society, it was a staple. It was consumed daily, by adults and children alike, often serving as a key source of nutrients. But the role of beer didn't stop at the dining table. It flowed into the economic structure of the society, being used as a form of currency. In fact, the workers who toiled under the scorching sun, constructing the majestic pyramids, were often rewarded with beer. Yes, you heard it right. The pyramids, one of the seven wonders of the world, were built on a currency of beer. But why beer? Well, it was relatively easy to produce, it had nutritional value, and it was safer to drink than the often contaminated water of the Nile. So beer became a form of liquid bread, a nourishing beverage, and a method of payment all rolled into one. So next time you crack open a cold one, remember you're participating in a tradition that dates back thousands of years. Now, isn't that something to raise a glass to? It's no secret that the internet loves cats, but did you know ancient Egyptians were the original cat enthusiasts? Let's delve into the sands of time and discover how cats were revered in ancient Egypt. Cats, or Mao as they were called, held a high status in Egyptian society. They were believed to possess protective qualities and were often seen as symbols of grace and poise. This cat adoration was also linked to the worship of the goddess Baste, known as the lioness goddess. Baste was associated with home, fertility and childbirth, but also with the protective nature of a lioness. Over time, Bastet's image transformed from a fierce lioness to a domesticated cat, making cats sacred creatures in the eyes of the Egyptians. The reverence for cats was so profound that the penalty for harming, or even worse, killing a cat even accidentally, was a severe punishment, often resulting in death. Archaeological findings support this love for felines, with discoveries of elaborate cat cemeteries and mummified cats, some even buried with their owners to accompany them in the afterlife. In many ways, it seems our modern obsession with cats isn't so modern after all. Scene Script Ancient Egyptians were innovative in many ways, but perhaps one of their strangest inventions was crocodile dung contraception. Yes, you heard it right, crocodile dung. Now before you scrunch up your face in disgust, remember that this was a time when the intricacies of human reproduction were not fully understood. The ancient Egyptians were doing their best with the knowledge they had, so why crocodile dung of all things? Well, the idea was that the dung, when inserted, would soften and form an impenetrable barrier, thus preventing pregnancy. It was a crude method to be sure, but it was born out of a rudimentary understanding of how conception worked. The effectiveness of this method is, understandably, up for debate. Some sources suggest it may have had a limited effect, due to the acidic properties of the dung, which could potentially kill sperm. However, it's unlikely it was particularly reliable, and it certainly wouldn't meet modern standards for contraception. Despite the dubious effectiveness, this practice reveals a lot about the ancient Egyptians' approach to reproductive health. They were innovators, willing to experiment and use the resources available to them in their environment. They recognized the need for contraception and took steps to address it, even if their methods were a little unorthodox by today's standards. While we can admire the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians, it's safe to say we've come a long way in terms of contraception options. When you think of ancient Egypt, mummies probably come to mind. But did you know that the process of mummification was deeply tied to the Egyptians' beliefs about the afterlife? Mummification was not just a preservation technique, but a sacred ritual that prepared the departed for their journey into the afterlife. The ancient Egyptians believed that the soul, or ka, needed a physical home to return to, hence the importance of preserving the body. The process was complex and meticulous, lasting up to 70 days. Organs were removed, the body was dried out, and then it was wrapped in linen, ready for the afterlife. But it wasn't just about preserving the body. Amulets and charms were also placed within the wrappings as protection for the journey ahead. Now let's talk about the Book of the Dead. Not a single book, but a collection of funerary texts. It included spells, prayers, and instructions to guide the deceased through the afterlife. This journey was not an easy one. The heart of the deceased would be weighed against the feather of Mat, the goddess of truth. If the heart was lighter, the soul could proceed to the field of reeds, a heavenly paradise. If not, well, let's just say it wasn't a pleasant fate. 
So mummies aren't just a spooky Halloween symbol, but a fascinating glimpse into the spiritual life of ancient Egyptians.